If you've ever tried to create that nostalgic film look digitally, the grain, the halations, the bloom, you've probably realized there's just nothing quite like the real thing. Enter Dehancer, one of the best tools for photographers really chasing that film look while keeping that added convenience of shooting digital. As a bonus, these same features and looks are all available in their video plugin as well if you want to carry over that vibe to your video work. I've really wanted to try Dehancer for a while now, really promising to deliver for both photo and video. But with so many options out there, is Dehancer really worth the investment? How good is it really? Does it live up to the hype? And more importantly, can it actually deliver that film magic to your digital work? Let's jump in and find out. All right, before we get started, total transparency that Dehancer did provide me free access just to test this out, but no payment and zero input on this review. They haven't seen it in advance and specifically asked for my honest feedback, hopefully so they can improve their product. And as you'll find out, although I have really enjoyed it, there are definitely a couple of areas that I think could be improved. So getting started with the installation, which was smooth and straightforward, this is all well documented on their website and in the included PDF, so I won't go into detail here. Let's start in Lightroom Classic. And once you're installed, simply right click on the photo that you wanna open up and go choose Edit In Dehancer Plugin. If you've used Photoshop from Lightroom before, this workflow is basically the same. Keep in mind, you can only open one image at a time, so not ideal for batch editing. The upside though is if you've done an edit previously, you will find a preset of that last edit in the side panel for quick access, ready to reuse if you want that same effect. So the interface, you'll notice we have both films and presets on the left side here. The difference, films are those core simulations of specific film stocks like your Kodak Portra 400, Cine Still 800T, etc. And then our presets, if I click over to that, these are complete combinations of those film stocks plus some additional effects and adjustments like different levels of halation, bloom and printing effects as well to quickly show you a few examples of these film stocks. So you'll find all our stocks here. You can also click on profile and find them all there. Plenty of options to choose from. And then of course we can, if you're familiar with film, you can also push or pull and get a similar effect that you would shooting on those film stocks. You can also save them as favorites up here. So if I go on all films, I can come down to my favorites and show you a few. So of course, CineStill 800T, 50D, I also like this. Ag for 100. Coming down, I really love this Ektachrome E100 as well. I've got just Ektar as well, Portra 160, and of course, Portra 400. I think for this one, I'm going to go with Coda Ektachrome E100. Moving over to the right hand side here on the panel, you'll find all these fine tune controls really in depth. Starting with source. So this is where we can make all our basic adjustments to things like exposure, change our white balance if we want, just those subtle adjustments, even remove color fringing like chromatic aberration. Let's come down to film developer. This one mimics more the chemical development stage so we can kind of shape our contrast and color a little bit before printing. You can add in a little bit of contrast back in, maybe boost our color slightly. And that's the adjustments I typically make in this one. Coming down to film compression, and this more simulates films, more smooth highlight roll off and that dynamic range compression. So you can see we get a little bit more detail back in those highlights and you can really pick that white point there as well. You might wanna turn on your clipping to do this. You can see, just make sure that white point isn't clipping. Same with our next one, that's what expand does. We can kind of adjust our black point, which I won't change much there, and our white point, just make sure we're not clipping too much there. All right, coming down to print. Typically, I'm not making too much adjustments here, but you can pick your paper or just click linear. Color head is more like our color grading tab in Lightroom where we can add kind of a slight color cast as well. So I don't make big adjustments here. Sometimes I'll make these kind of subtle adjustments and just put that slight color cast. You can pick whether you want that in the shadows, midtones, or highlights, and just reduce the impact of it as well if you want. Of course, our film grain, we can select any of the presets here based on format and ISO. Let's just pick that one. I like to zoom into 100 to see this. Now, you can also customize this. So you can change things like the resolution, which would be more the format for film, whether it's like medium format, 35, and you can also change things like the amount. Lots of adjustments here. What I like to change is not to affect my highlights too much. So I like to 
just bring that down slightly as well. All right, moving on to halation, one of my favorites. Of course, this mimics that red halation that we see with particular film stocks. We can again click on presets. You can see they're going to get stronger on the smaller formats and then stronger again if you go no remjet. Again, we can customize these as much as we want. But let's come down to Bloom, another popular one, adding that kind of soft glow around your highlights. Again, the lower you go on the format, the more strength you'll have. So let's just go 35 on this one. A lot like this mist filter effect that a lot of people are going for at the moment. Film damage, this is where we can add things like, if I come to custom, you can see like our dust, hairs, and scratches. The smaller formats, you'll notice these are going to show up a lot more. And this refresh button is really handy because you can change the location of them until you're kind of happy with it. If you want to make adjustments, then go into custom again. But let's come down to overscan. I don't typically use this, but we can also add that in if you want those effects and frames as well, like scanning. And lastly, vignette, which of course we can add in Lightroom as well. So many settings. You obviously don't need to use all of them, and I don't typically, but if you are a real film buff and after that really true film look, this is perfect. But let's jump into some of my edits so I can focus on a few key things that I'm often adjusting. All right, quickly show you how I got to this one with Portra 400, you can see before, after our source, I've just changed the white balance slightly to a warmer tone, about there. Film developer, just boost the color ever so slightly, plus 10. Film compression, I've definitely kind of flattened it out quite a bit. I might actually bring that white point just back a little bit. Expand, again, just brighten that white point a little bit. Print, color head, I've left blank on this one. Again, added in a nice bit of grain there. Might just go custom and again, not affect my highlights as much. Halation, I'm gonna stick with that 65, 70 and same with my bloom. Finally, I might just add in some film damage. Just hit refresh there. So you can see before, after. All right, another quick edit. This one I'm gonna go for Cinestill 800T. So starting with our source, I might just tweak my white balance a little bit, happy there. Film developer, I'm gonna boost the color about there, maybe add in a tiny bit of contrast. Compression, I'm kind of happy with that. Expand though, I might just make some slight adjustments to the whites, check. I'm okay with the tiny bit of clipping, so let's go about there. Black point, I'm happy with that. Print, I'm gonna leave. Color head, I am gonna play with, so let's just tweak that. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of green, and a little bit of red. Impact, I'm just gonna bring down to about 50. So film grain, I want some of that. Let's go, yeah, 35 again. I might just adjust my highlights again, bring those back a tiny bit. Halation, yes, let's go heavy. Yeah, happy with that. Bloom, similar, I want it heavy on this one. Get that max effect, and we will add a bit of film damage as well. And I'm pretty happy with that placement. So on this one we have before, after, a nice heavy cine still edit. From my experience so far, the film stocks all do an epic job of mimicking their real life counterparts. That said, one feature I'd really love to see added in is an overall intensity slider for the film presets. You can fine tune nearly everything else, but not the strength of the film stock itself. I understand their logic as it says on the website, in real life you can't just half load a film roll. But since we are working digitally, an intensity slider would make things much more flexible. All these additional effects like grain, halation and bloom, that's where Dehancer really stands out from my kind of usage. There's a lot to love here, especially if you more like building your own look and then adding these film inspired elements. So overall the Lightroom workflow works quite well, but having to open each individual photo into Dehancer and then send it back to Lightroom, I guess isn't the smoothest, but to me that's more of a limitation of Lightroom itself rather than Dehancer. But 
On that last point, that's exactly where the mobile app comes in. Unfortunately, it's only iOS for now, which is a bit of a letdown for me as a Samsung user, but there is a browser version which we can use on Android. All right, onto video, but if you have tried Dehancer either on desktop or mobile, I'd love to hear your experience in the comments. And if you are thinking about trying it out for yourself, be sure to check the link down in the description. So. Moving on to video, and if anything, this workflow is even smoother with video editing software slightly more suited to this type of plugin, in my opinion. So I'm using Premiere Pro, and once installed, you'll find Dehancer under the effects panel ready to go. So next, just drag it onto your clip, and you'll find all of these same controls, like your film stocks, the grain, halation, bloom, all there just like in the photo plugin. A few other really handy features like monitoring tools you can turn on your clipping overlay. We also have a LUT generator so you can quickly reuse any of your favorite combinations once you've found them. This can get quite processor heavy with multiple clips so just be aware of that. As a nice bonus for video though, you can actually change the intensity of film stocks by applying this effect onto an adjustment layer. So maybe not by design, but this is really handy as now we can also apply this effect across multiple clips at once. Keeping that consistent look throughout, super efficient and super easy to do. So when working with multiple clips, it's far easier than working with multiple photos. So the video plugin has everything I love about the photo options, but definitely slightly smoother in my opinion. It's very effective and honestly, it's hard to fault for video. So let's break it down. Is Dehancer worth it? And for me, the simple test is whether I want to keep using it. And the answer is definitely yes. So the good Dehancer really nails that elusive film look. The full film stock emulations come impressively close to the real thing. And as a bonus, the Premiere Pro workflow is one of the smoothest I've used from install to application. So moving on to the not so good. And if you are someone who prefers crafting your own look, like I do for stills, you might not really rely on the full film stock presets, especially with no intensity slider. But the real strength, like I've mentioned, really comes from those added controls, things like our grain, bloom, and halation, which are all highly customizable. Sure, you can add these effects manually in other ways, but not with this level of precision or quality. The Lightroom workflow is also slightly clunky for batch editing, but hopefully the iOS app should help really streamline this for some. Again, fingers crossed for that Android version. And lastly, it's not cheap. If you're only using a few features occasionally, it's a harder sell, but even if you are regularly leaning into all these extra effects, like I am, the bloom and halation, it absolutely starts to justify itself. So my honest advice is try it out for yourself. You can check the link down in the description if you are interested. And honestly, this is the only way to see if it fits your style and your workflow, and if it's actually going to be worth your money. If you've already tried Dehancer or you plan to, I'd love to hear how you're using it or your thoughts. Let me know down in the comments and thanks so much for watching. And as always, keep shooting, stay curious and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.